Welcome to Strata Tree Gear. We're doing an advanced rigging video today. We're talking about this tree that we'll be taking out. We're pulling some big tops off of it, but they all go every which direction um, and they all need to land in the same zone. So the trick to today's work is gonna be picking the correct vector to pull with our pull line so that the tops don't peel out the wrong way and end up on something that we're trying to save. So hopefully you find this useful, check it out. Uh, so I've got a sort of small scale mock-up of what we're trying to do behind me. Um, and on the, here on the ground, I've got this sort of piece of metal that's going to delineate where our landing zone is. We've got some room over here, but it's not a lot of room. And we've got this tree in the back and we're pulling tops off. Now this tree uh, on the whole leans away from our landing zone, uh, the majority of it, but all these tops spread out different directions. And so in order to get each individual top to land in there, we have to pick the appropriate angle to pull on them. For example, so the first, let's just say this is the first top and it leans straight away from our landing zone. Well, the appropriate angle for something that's straight away from the landing zone is directly opposite the lean. So if I pull on this, you can let it go. It's gonna go in the right spot if we go directly opposite landing zone. When this gets, this gets tricky, when you've got something that's leaning at some you know, uh, obtuse angle away. So, Right now, directly opposite is over here. If I pull directly opposite, it's gonna land outside of where we, need, where we need it to go. So in order to get this to land appropriately, I have to pick the, the vector that is enough opposite the lean to counteract the lean, but also I gotta use my face cut to steer it properly into the zone. And that involves pulling it opposite the lean to counteract it, but then allowing the face cut to make sure it goes in the right zone. Um, in, in this instance, I'm not going to pull directly opposite the lean because if my face cut breaks early, it could kind of go either way. I'm going to pull almost directly opposite the lean, but I'm going to cheat a little bit towards the landing zone. Not a lot, probably 10, 15 degrees or something. Same thing on these ones, these tops that are going back and away the other direction. I'm going to go almost directly opposite the lean. This would be directly opposite the lean here but I'm gonna cheat a little bit towards the landing zone. And again, I'm gonna pull and we're gonna get it to land uh, where, where it's safe to do so. So that's kind of the challenge for this tree. And hopefully we'll get some good videos. You can kind of see a little bit behind me the way it flares out like that. Uh, that will be the challenge today is to get all those tops to land right here at the base without ending up too far to that way or too far that way. So here we go, let's get on it. Sorry to interrupt, but if you enjoy my content in this channel and you're looking at diving deeper into tree work, check out stridertrees.com. I've got a course for the beginner who's just looking at getting into the trees for the first time. And I've also got a series that's more tilted towards folks who are already doing residential tree work. Uh, it's going to have the safety trainings and the skill trainings starting at new hire to take someone right off the street, make them an apprentice, teach them the more advanced skills all the way to a foreman. Uh, and if that's something you'd be interested in, you can leave your email address there on the website and I'll uh, let you guys know first thing when that's available. Also, you can schedule to have me come out to your job site and be a contract climber and an instructor and combine that time uh, to offer you the best value to upgrade your skills with your crew on your job. So you can do that. You can schedule that on my website as well, stridertrees.com. Now back to the goods. So here's our top. It goes a little bit off to the left and away from me that direction. And 
So I'm gonna set the rigging down that way so ultimately it lands here. Because it, it leans over there. I wanna counteract the lean going that way. I think ideally the rope would be more, more over, but uh, it's not gonna to matter too much for this because I already took off half the, the weight so where the hinge wood's gonna be good and strong. So I'm gonna face the hinge wood right where I want it to fall, right there. And we're gonna pull it off to that side to counteract the lean that's going that way. And then it's, all that's left is the lean from this trunk that's going that direction. So it should be able to, uh, all of those vectors combined should land it bingo right, right down our little alley right there towards the ditch witch. That's the goal anyway. Oh, it's a little bit dull. Here we go. Oh. So what happened there? That did not go as desired. The uh, little branch up there caught onto it and held. And then these guys were too far, they were too close this direction and they needed to be more over there. So that was my bad. In this case, eh, it doesn't matter for us because that fence is already trashed. That's gonna be good enough, but it's not really where I was aiming. And, uh, and that's why I was willing to take the risk because even if it misses a little, we're okay. But um, it really didn't go quite how we wanted. Hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully you got a couple of examples there when it goes right, but also uh, when it goes wrong and how it can go wrong because uh, when you're vectoring with just one rope, there's always that chance that it goes slightly off from where the rope is pulling unless you're pulling directly exactly opposite the lean. That's always the safest. So when you go off from that, when you cheat to one side or the other, you open up the chance for the hinge to break early, early and the, the top or the piece to end up uh, off from where you were aiming. In this case, uh, worst case scenario, we squish a fence that we'd already squished, so I wasn't too worried about it. It just makes it a little less convenient for the guys cleaning it up. 
So don't try this stuff where, you know, the, the worst case scenario ends up crushing a house or a building or hurting someone. You know, be safe, take your time, figure it out. And thanks for joining me and I'll catch you next time.